I've been gaming for as long as I can remember but never really thought of doing a gaming setup tour till I started YouTube a few months ago. Hello and welcome to the value space. This here is my ultimate gaming setup for 2022 and I'll be giving you a tour of the room as well. Being a multi-purpose space, I put a lot of thought in the overall design of the room. The overall layout is divided into three. The TV area, sitting area and storage. All these are merged together through the elements of functionality, fluidity, cohesiveness and aesthetics. I've left links of everything in this setup in the description box below. If there's anything that tickles your fancy, you can check it out, otherwise buckle up and let's go for the ride. Kicking off with my TV setup. I recently did a video on this TV and if you'd like an in-depth look at it, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box below. My current TV is a Samsung Q60A and it's been cutting it for me. In reality, it's not the best in terms of gaming, but that doesn't mean it's bad for it. This is due to lack of features like HDMI 2.1 support, variable refresh rate, 4K at 120Hz, just to name but a few. It does have auto low latency mode though, which automatically detects my PS5 when it turns on. Majority of the time I game on this TV, but I recently got the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9, which is a dedicated gaming monitor, but I mainly use it for productivity. I'll be looking to switch in between the setups just to get a feel of both. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell as I'll be doing another gaming setup video with the Odyssey Neo G9. To add some character to an otherwise plain and boring setup, I added Govi LED light strips behind the TV which create a bit of a spectacle with the rest of the lights at night. And to make it even better, you can segment the strip and customize the lights to your liking using the Govi Home app. To integrate them with the other lights, I have them synced with Amazon Alexa that makes it super easy turning them on or off just by the press of a button on the app or through voice command. I've also got cable resources I bought from Amazon which help with a bit of cable management. I eventually plan to mount the soundbar on the wall to make it look a lot cleaner. Underneath the TV I got this media console I bought from eBay and it's held up so well. It's made out of medium density fiberboard and spans about 240 centimeters, which perfectly accommodates the size of my TV. On top of it, I've got my Samsung HWQ950T Series 9 soundbar that has a 9.1.2 channel. Next to the soundbar, I have my Wi Fi router, PS5 controllers and charging dock, and my PS5 Digital Edition console. To the left, I have this terrarium that brings nature to the media console through some greenery, and it's got a bunch of plants in it. The second compartment has a few four plants I bought from a local shop. Inside the drawers, I've got a bunch of miscellaneous things like HDMI cables, spare Govi light strips, this super long LAN cable, Galaxy light projector I normally bring out on movie nights, remote controllers and appliance manuals. By the way, excuse the mess. Flanking the media console on either side, I've got these floating shelves I bought from Ikea and they both host a levitating plant and pub which leave many friends of mine in amazement when they visit me. Their infinite rotations evoke a very ethereal come to the space while working and their woody theme ties in well with the rest of the space. Moving on to the soundbar, like they say, sound is 50% of the viewing experience. I chose to stay in the Samsung ecosystem with my Samsung HWQ950T soundbar that comes with a subwoofer and two surround speakers and it's been absolutely punching. Its neutral and balanced sound profile delivers thumpy and punchy bass that is suitable for a variety of audio content. It also has several sound enhancement features like graphic EQ with additional presets that enable you tweak the sound. As a high-end soundbar, it comes with Q-Symphony, a feature that works in tandem with compatible Samsung QLED TVs to create a more immersive audio experience. On the flip side, despite being quite pricey, its chassis is mainly plastic with a top part covered in fabric. I like the idea of the fabric which adds an interesting design element, but then again, it becomes the ultimate dust magnet. 
and when it comes to the grille, a metallic one, just like in other Samsung premium models, would have been a lot better. I also find having a display screen on top of the soundbar defeating the purpose as it forces you to stand up to navigate through the different settings. All in all, a good soundbar for the ultimate audio experience and the perfect match for a compatible Samsung TV. When it comes to gaming, I've been a diehard fan of the PlayStation dating back to the year 2000 when my mom bought me my first PlayStation 1. Many years later, I'm still in the ecosystem using the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition as my console of choice. It's been working well with my TV even though it's not the best in terms of gaming. As mentioned earlier, I recently got a Super Ultra Wide specifically designed for gaming and if you haven't watched my review of the monitor, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. When it comes to sitting, I normally sit about 15 feet from the screen either on my L-shaped couch or my Eames replica lawn chair, but I prefer the latter as it's way comfier than the couch. In case you're wondering what my favorite games are, I enjoy playing FIFA, NBA 2K23, Call of Duty, Forza Horizon among many others. And by the way, playing story driven games on such a massive TV provides some of the most immersive gaming experience. Next to my console, I have a PS5 controller charging station that perfectly matches with the console. Moving on to extra storage, to the left of the TV, I have an industrial shelving unit that I used to store some of my books, decor pieces and an air freshener. On the bottom shelves, I have three rattan baskets that I used to store random stuff in my living room. It also houses my Himalayan salt lamp and I added plants to it to soften the industrial look. For those who don't know, the plant I have on it is called a devil's ivy and I have three of them in different placings. More on plants in just a bit. While on the subject of plants, I've got a ton scattered all over my house and they make it the perfect oasis to live in. By the way, if you haven't watched how I transform my kitchen and dining, be sure to check the link of the video in the description box. Starting off with the ones next to the industrial shelf, I've got a Monstera, a giant peace lily, a Zinzi plant and a Chinese money plant. Moving on to the other side, got another Chinese money plant, a peace lily, a fiddle leaf fig, a dumb can plant and a flamingo lily in coconut fiber baskets that add some texture to the space. Taking care of plants has become one of my favorite pastime activities and I love how they add so much life to the living room. Moving to the seating area, I've got a navy L-shaped couch with a right-facing chase. On it, I've got this set of pillows I bought from Amazon and they blend so well with my entire setup. While I've enjoyed using it for the past 9 months, it's not the deepest and the cushions are a bit too hard for my liking despite using it for almost a year. I'll be looking to upgrade to one with a bit more depth and more comfy cushions in the coming weeks so stay tuned for that. In the middle, I've got a walnut coffee table that adds more storage to its drawer, which I use to store away remote controls and things that don't need on the table. Covering the entire seating area is the Austin dark grey shaggy rug, which is so soft to the touch and provides the much needed warmth during the winter months. Moving along, to the right I've got two accent chairs. Starting with my favorite of the two, the Replica Ames Lawn Chair. Made from Italian leather and molded plywood, it adds mid-century vibes to my setup which elevates the overall aesthetic of the space. I enjoy sitting in it when watching movies or when playing video games and boy oh boy, by far the comfiest seat in the house. Complementing the Replica Ames Lawn Chair is the Maya Fall Leather Armchair from Temple and Webster in a tan colorway. When reading books, this is the perfect chill spot. In between the accent chairs, I have a small Scandinavian coffee table that I use to place my coffee or drink when seated on either of the chairs. When it comes to lighting, I've got a myriad of different sources, starting with a huge glass door to the left that lets in a lot of natural light during the day and speaking of natural light, I get more of it from the skylights in the ceiling and when darkness falls, my artificial lights kick in. Kicking off with a recess lighting that illuminates every corner of my living area and kitchen and dining. To set the perfect ambience for movie nights, my smart lights come into play. 
Being such a sucker for the Govi ecosystem, I've got a LED light strip behind my TV and TV cabinet and a bulb in both my carved and straight floor lamps. Control is super easy, I can either use the Govi app or Amazon Alexa through the app or voice control. Even though I'm happy with the current iteration, I plan to make a few changes over the coming months and if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out. People of the internet, if you stuck till the end, thank you so much. Here's another set of video you'd enjoy. I'm signing out. See you on the next one.